All right, good morning, traders. And let me just uh, check in here. We got everything going. Okay, if you can hear me and see my screen, uh, please uh, type yes in the uh, hashtag advanced dash webinar uh, chat. All right, thanks, eighth trader. Um, catchy name. Uh, thanks, guys. Excellent. Uh, uh, Sam, maybe you want to uh, jump in and uh, start restreaming. Well, I guess we'll wait until we hit, hit our uh, max there. Um, okay, and uh, let's see, waiting for Scott to come in. Uh, Scott, can you hear me? Are you in here? <coughs> hey, 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 can you hear me, Bruce? hey, there you are. Hey, there you Excellent. Are. Uh, okay, so um, I'm sorry. <coughs> let, me, let me go through, Scott, um, the, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a few slides here, uh, introduction, et cetera, and then, and then turn it over to you. Um, okay, okay, so this is the Bookmap live trading webinar, as you guys know. Uh, we've been doing it the last couple of weeks in here. Uh, so the, um, uh, you know, it's kind of a lull in the market. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that necessarily, but like uh, it typically is. And, uh, uh, you know, we thought, uh, well, you know, let's just uh, uh, continue our um, experiments here and uh, um, in Discord and see. Um, and try to offer this uh, for you guys directly in Discord. I think it'll be better for everybody. Uh, so we're still kind of working out some of the kinks. We're getting there. Uh, it's getting much better. So uh, yeah, Scott will be uh, he'll be, be presenting today. He'll, he will be taking live trades. Uh, this is the uh, Bookmap live trading webinar. It's the advanced education you get with your Bookmap subscription. So when you subscribe to Global Plus, this is part of what you get. Uh, you get access to our educational course. Uh, it goes through um, uh, basic market mechanics mechanics and market structure, strategies, uh, and correlations. Uh, it's essential to understand these. Uh, and then uh, we have advanced webinars daily uh, at 10 a.m. And we go through forward-looking analysis of the live markets. So you can apply exactly what you learned. You can ask questions. Uh, and then we have two professional traders uh, J Trader uh, on Wednesday, a stocks trader, and Scott Futures Trader here on Thursdays. So you can learn their specific ways of learning uh, trading order flow, their setups, their trade management, etc. So a really complete package here for education when you subscribe to Global Plus. Uh, all right, so let's get in. You guys know who Scott is. Uh, uh, if you don't look him up, uh, you'll find some really interesting information. Um, and I mean that, Scott, in a very good way. Um, so uh, uh, Scott also offers uh, mentoring services and education. I'll be putting these links into the chat for you. He also offers a trade copier service. Uh, a little more on that in a minute because what we're going through now is not a trade copier service at all. This is Bookmap Education. Uh, and uh, so listen please closely to these disclosures so at least you know you're get what you're getting in, involved with here. General disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, I have do I do have one uh, news item for you guys. I'll put this into the chat for you. Uh, this is the recording of the streaming videos for this week. I'm currently uploading J Traders. It will be in here. I'm going to put this playlist into the uh, uh, chat for you guys uh, so that uh, uh, you can access it here. Okay, so. Uh, uh, Yeah, there you go. Um, okay, so uh, that's that. And let me uh, turn it over to Scott and uh, 
let him take it away. Or Scott, you can just start uh, sharing your screen. Alrighty. Um, <clears throat> See my screen? Yeah, hold on a minute here. I need to stop that and no i don't see it hold on sorry yikes i'm just all thumbs in here um right okay and scott's screen yes got it okay uh yep all, all set to go scott yeah. All right. Well, um, first of all, I'm still sick, so I'm going on day nine, and I'm I feel not one bit better. So my room is uh, quite tired of hearing about it. I've I've had to cancel like every afternoon webinar the, the last eight days because I just this is the I don't know what this is this flu, but it's not going away. So bear with me. I'll I'll hang in as long as I can. <clears throat> um, two, there is absolutely nothing going on. Like I, there has not been one. SI volume signal in any market since I started this a couple hours ago, except for soybean. So um, we may just end up doing more of a uh, Q and A type of thing if uh, the stuff doesn't pick up. But I mean, there is literally nothing going on, and you can see. I mean, you see on this SI indicator, we haven't got anywhere near threshold for stops or icebergs in any market. Um, and then you can see over here. <clears throat> Stuff that you want to pay attention to is like the relative volume, and this is just absolutely pathetic. I mean, we're at 40% you know, of normal volume. I mean, I understand it's a holiday week, but it's just really bad. So um, I wouldn't be expecting much. So if you guys got questions, I can answer those as we get into it. But uh, I will, I will uh, try to stick on as long as I can before I fall out of my chair it's what i feel like for nine days now <clears throat> so um speaking of which the only thing that's really gone off today is again soybeans and i just drew these zones so this was earlier you had 161 cell ice that's this black zone let's see these uh sweeps right here as well i should, I should probably just include those but <clears throat> And then we had some buyers just come in too, and this is just, there's just nothing. I mean, this is, I guess it's about 200. So I'm gonna expand the zone and then we'll see how this trades out of here. Other than that, there has not been one signal anywhere. So, as you can see, I incorporated, it's only about a six, six, six and a half cent zone. But I incorporated all of these and then some swipes in here too, with the sweeps. Um, so we'll wait for an ATR move above, out of here, above, retest failure to go long or short. Um, again, I'm trading a lot of these. For the last month in my room, I've been trading these setups in the vacuum all completely by themselves, not caring where we are on the charts, just to show show my room. You know, the, 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 the simpler you can make your trading, the better you're going to do, right? And volume is the number one driver of markets. And if you understand how to trade these setups, you have an edge and then when you can incorporate these setups in important areas on a chart that you deem important then you have a, a real edge so but you can just trade these setups alone without even looking at a chart and still be profitable so that's what i you know show in my room but um <clears throat> so this is that's what it means right here obviously your immediate term bullish um, tried to break down here multiple times we have this balance here we had this balance here, this balance here, and I kept waiting for this thing to go to zero, and then we broke out, retested this high volume node, balance, broke out, and now we're kind of stuttering inside the high volume node of this prior balance. So whatever way this breaks is probably going to be the next big move, um, because if it gets above this high volume node of this guy, then it's basically a failed breakdown of a you know, multi-month balance. Um, so I expect that, but right now you can see we're just in here. So I'm just showing this again. I'll take the trade either way here based on the volume, but you know, right now this looks shorter term bearish just because we're breaking down out of this thing. 
Um, so I, I would prefer to play to the short side, but again, whatever way we break out of that zone, I'm going to play it. But this looks like we may come back and retest these, some of these balances down here. But if this does this, then I'll gladly go long as well. So we'll see. <clears throat> or we could just sit in here for the, for the full hour, which is very likely. Um, you can see here in the CES, nothing. The only thing that really came in was some sweeps. Again, this is a new uh, one of the new indicators for you get it. It's not the SI indicator. It's not CME MBO data, but it's uh, Bruce can tell you more about it. But it's the sweeps indicator. It basically is just showing you large volume sweeps in the book, which is you know just as important as these SI indicator setups, right? Um, it's still volume. It's still volume coming in, running people over, and you know, guys taking positions and someone's caught on the other side. So, you know, we haven't got into drawing zones and playing these yet because I, I still need to go back, you know, if I'm ever well again, if this, this sickness doesn't last for the next six months, I want to go go back and come up with thresholds for these sweep indicators because they're not the same as, as the SI indicator thresholds. They're way more. I, I, that's not really explainable. I agree, but it is what it is, right? For instance, like we'll see, NASDAQ, there hasn't been any today, but I've seen multiple times, um, actually I can even show you where there's, there's been like, <clears throat> you know, 1,200 sweeps in NASDAQ. Like if there was 1,200 sweeps, you told me there was 1,200 icebergs or stops in NASDAQ, I would fall off my chair, right? So it's like, they're not the same as far as the, um, the thresholds, and I've got to figure out what they are. And that's just going to go back, that's just by going back and replaying the days, and, and you guys can all do the same thing as well. Trying to see, uh, let's see if I can show you guys an example. Um, yeah, I mean, like the other day, I have a better example than this, but you can see it's, you know, 800 sweeps right here in NASDAQ. That's a ton. Soybean iceberg cell, yes, 223 contracts. Um, that's a ton, and if that, you told me there was 800 ice, I'd be like, that's crazy. So. Again, we got to. I got to figure out what the thresholds are for these, but they are going to be. There's going to be a whole new, new um, avenue of setups. <clears throat> um, so like this here, like I wouldn't even pay attention to this sweep here. It's 272, even though it did hold pretty nicely. You know, you want to see in, in Nasdaq. You want to see at least over five, six hundred that I've noticed so far. So the way you play these is. You know, when you just draw the zones like you do with the SI indicator, and then when you move away, ATR, retest fail, that's how I'm going to be playing these in the future. But again, I need to figure out the threshold. So, <clears throat> um, so what's going on in soybeans? And this is literally the only thing that's firing off the entire morning. T24 sell ice, another 191 buy ice. So this is just, just have to increase this zone. Now the zone is, you know, almost nine cents wide. So all I did is basically incorporate all this ice. So we'll see. You know, if we can finally get a move out of here and I'm not seeing any more ice come in, then I'll stop drawing the zone and I'll play the zone. But if the ice keeps coming in, you gotta keep drawing, expanding the zone. It sucks, but it is what it is. I mean, we see this all the time in ES too. It's like we'll get a signal, <clears throat> and the market will start moving away, and I'm ready to trade the zone, and then more ice will come in, and I'll just have to expand the zone. So, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> oh, Scott, it's it's, it's just uh, horrible to hear you like this. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry that you feel so bad. Um, or we can, we, you know, we can cut this short or whenever you kind of, you know, uh, are done with ranting, maybe that's a good time to, to stop, but, uh, uh, maybe I can try to get you on some rants. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that'll make me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get to get your energy levels <laughs> up. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to mention in here, um, sorry to interrupt I, I, If you guys are having troubles, um, uh, a accessing Scott's stream, uh, both Sam and I are restreaming it in here, so you should be able to um, also watch it uh, there. And then, of course, you already have access to the uh, voice channel in here, so you should be able to hear Scott uh, uh, speak. And then uh, use the um, adv 
you know, hashtag advanced dash webinar um, uh, text channel uh, to it's, it's right here in the voice channel section uh, to ask questions and whatever. OK, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe have to do a little tutorial on, on all of this. But uh, uh, anyway, that's the uh, the method here. Uh, and Scott, any questions you have on the sweeps and, and stop uh, or uh, sweeps and absorption indicator? Um, yeah, no, no problem. If you want to do more like a lesson plan today, uh, what, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Yeah, again, I mean, there's nothing going on. What I'll do is I'll just go over these markets, you know, longer term structure first, like I do. We do this in my room every morning because you always want to, <clears throat> even though I'm trading these, been trading for the last month, trading these setups in a vacuum, you still want to have a, you always want to know what the bigger picture of these markets looks like so you can position yourself, you know, the right way. So I'll go over these markets uh, one by one and kind of give people just a bigger time frame picture. And then if there's some questions, well, I'll answer them. The best I can before I fall out of my chair. Um, so we'll start with crude. <clears throat> There's not been a single, a single volume set up in here today. You can see there's liquidity above. You can almost guarantee we'll be filling that. Again, you newer, newer peeps in here. You know, when you see this liquidity, it's just large orders in the order book, right? It's just visually, you can see it here versus there, right? So, um, you know, when you see liquidity that's been in there for a long time, that serves as a magnet. So um, the market will make it there eventually. And when you're coming up with your thesis in the morning on which way, you know, the bigger picture and which way you want to try to um, design your trades or uh, the direction that you're looking for, you know, a great way is to look where the liquidity is too. And you can see there's a bunch of liquidity up here at 80. I don't know if we'll get there today, but um, you can bet that these these two liquidity areas will be filled. So it's just always a good to know where that is when you're coming up with your thesis for the day. Um, <clears throat> so this market's obviously back to being very bullish. Um, you know, we caught a lot of this down move when this happened. This was the Thanksgiving COVID uh, Omicron, it's nonsense, uh, but it's recovered since then. You can see we built balance, and then we, and inside these balances, there were, you know, or inside this balance, there's always, everything's fractal, right? So there were there were balances inside this big balance that you know, at the time we were struggling. We broke down, retest the high volume node, built more balance, broke down, tried to retest the high volume node again, broke down, and then we finally on this big one, we finally have broken out, right? So all we're doing now is building balance right here. So this this zone I have right here is gonna be really important when we break out of this because this is where the directional conviction that, that started this whole down move started, right? So this is a regular trading hours chart, so it, it shows gaps um, and you can see, so a gap is the same as directional conviction, directional conviction is you know just sustained movement straight movement right so you can see it started here we gapped down this day and then we opened up this day and it kept going so this is going to be a really really important area um once we get there where it's either gonna how can you see what's happening first time or if we get through there then we're coming back up to this guy here this balance here <clears throat> so we always talk about the areas of balance balances that you want to be looking to trade are the bottom bottoms of balances or high volume nodes. So high volume nodes is just, again, balance is just two-sided trade, traders taking bets, and the high volume node is the <clears throat> basically the, the middle of that area. That's where the most trade occurred in that area. So markets can come to the bottom and reject or the high volume node reject. Once we get back above that high volume node, then it's off to the races, and, which I think is gonna happen. And we have some sweet gas prices when that happens, but. Um, <clears throat> So we're not too far from this now. I mean, you want to be very careful just fading. A lot of times when markets return to the directional conviction areas, that is, you know, that's a great fade trade. But this is a different scenario, right? This is not a, um, we're building balance right below there is what I'm saying. So say if we just came right from here all the way up to here, this would that'd be a great fade trade, right? But if you build balance right below there, that's not such a great fade trade. Meaning I'm not just going to flat out short this area with a break of this guy, right? Because this is all this is is stored energy. This is these are traders placing bets. And when they're wrong, whoever whatever side's wrong, 
it has to peel can get out. Right? Soybean so you, ice for cells, yes. 200 contracts. So you don't want to be standing in the way of the peel, is what I'm saying. So I'll, I'll still watch this area very carefully, but just be careful if we do break out of this, trying to just short this blindly. Um, the best trade will be if this fails and then we do this and get through this high volume note. That would be a fail breakout, and that's my one of my favorite trades. So that's where you'd short this once it gets through the high volume note of this, and then there's really no structure here. This thing could come all the way back, so at least to this high volume note. So one second. All right. <clears throat> um, so anyway, we're just we're in balance, and this market's bullish as of right now. So let's see what's going on with soybeans. Keeps coming in. I think this is a different color. I'm having a hard time uh, seeing this today. <clears throat> How can you see what's happening? V pattern. Stop, stop, file alert at CL 163 contract. All right, it's the first signal of the day <laughs> in any market besides beans. So you can see it. So you can see here, right? So this stop run that just fired off was 241, but 800 sweeps total. So Yes, this is part of this is the sweeps, but there was another 600 or five, 500 and something that were not stop runs, right? So this is an important area. That's a lot. But like I said, do you see the difference in the threshold? Like my threshold for crude for stops and ice is 150. This is 811. Like, and that's not that out of the ordinary, right? So what, that's what I'm saying is be careful playing these sweeps as zones until you can figure out what the adequate threshold is to be playing them. This is definitely threshold, but I mean, I'd be drawing this zone regardless because of the stop run. So that's what I'm going to do right now, and then we'll play this zone. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to incorporate all of these sweeps because, I mean, I would normally have my my zone right here. That, that's the stop run here, but you can see there's still some stops here. I mean, it was only 63, but this was another 200 sweeps right here. So I'm just going to incorporate this whole area, and then I'll play, play this area, whichever way we break out of this area is, will be the trade. Um, again, I prefer it to be long because this market is bullish, but I will play it either way, depending. So what do we do next? <clears throat> you need to get your 5-minute ATR, average shoe range. We're at 16.6, so I round up 17 ticks. So I don't determine what this, what setup this is, so I have five distinct setups um, in my SI indicator course. And there's going to be even more when I, again, get the thresholds for these sweeps. Um, but I wait for an ATR move away from here to determine what this is. So this could be, this is a stop run, right? So this could be what we call dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber is where the dumb money pukes, the retail trader puke, and there's no follow through. Paper doesn't step in and continue to push it higher. So many, many times the market just gets the puke and then reverses and goes the other way. <clears throat> um, so that's what we call dumb and dumber. Or this could hold right here, right? Sit here. And then continue higher, and then you know the big money starts to push it higher. A block That's that a stop and hold. So we don't know what this is until it gets an ATR out of here. So I need to see 17 ticks either way out of this zone to, to trade it. So this zone's at 77.30, the bottom of the zone. So I would need to see 77.13 for this to be an official dumb and number. <clears throat> so we need to see this trade there. And then what I do, out of, you know, out of all the markets, so the way I've been doing for the last month is trading these zones very conservatively. We talk about this all the time, how there's no disputing what just happened, right? There's no, this is not an art form where you, it's up for discussion what this, what just happened there, right? This was a stop run. There was more sweeps, another five, That's 600 like behind it. What you can do you know, is guys that tried to run over the market, like areas, um, right? guys that were potentially run over if it kept going, or guys that, you know, took a stand and, and dropped in a bunch of buys either way someone's on the other side of the trade right so there, there's no disputing this area there's a lot of volume right so what what 
is an art is how you trade these zones. So we talk about this all the time. You can trade these zones in any way you want. You can say, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm bearish today. I want to, the minute we break out of the zone, I'm going short and I'm just going to risk right above the zone. Or the minute we break above, I'm going to get above or I'm going to go long. That's up to you, you know, as you get better at identifying these and understanding how to play them, you can play these any way you want. The way, you know, from watching this over two years of, you know, thousands and thousands of setup, I've come up with the best way to trade these are, um, you know, the conservative ways, the way for the full ATR, the way for a retest of the area, and then when it starts to go back the other way, um, half ATR, three quarter ATR, I've now moved it to three quarter because I've been getting screwed on the half ATR. Then you get in and then you risk, you know, an ATR above that zone. Um, so that's that's how I've that's how I trade it. That's the conservative entry, right? The problem is if you wait for this, you don't always get it, obviously, right? So the whole principle behind that thought process is guys that are caught that are run over. So you can see the blue bubbles here, right? So that what the black is is just responsive sellers, right? So somebody tried to jump up and buy. I mean, of course, obviously some of it was stop runs, but the rest of it was somebody jumping up and buying here and someone had to sell them, right? So there were just responsive orders in the order book that got run over. Well, right now, they're looking, they're sitting pretty, right? They, the market didn't move higher, so whoever sold these, these black dots, they're in the driver's seat now. So whoever tried to run this, run these guys over are wrong, right? So say you're the buyer, say you're a big buyer here and you bought all 811 of these and now the market's down here. You're like, um, yeah, that's not working out for me. I, please come back so I can scratch my trade. And this is this is all, all my setups are based on my experience as a large trader, right? So this is exactly how I would react. If I would jump up and be aggressive and the market would do that, then I'd be sitting here holding the bag, praying that it would come back to my area so I can get out of the trade. I wouldn't even be greedy. I'd just be saying if this comes back. Stop by NQ. 158 contracts. Um, all right, at least we're getting some activity. Um, if it comes back, then I'll be happy just to scratch my trade, right? So that's the principle behind the retest fail because the guys that are caught, when it comes back, you know, they'll put their offers in and they'll try to get out as many as they can on the retest. But if it starts to run away, then they got to go to the market and that's what causes the next wave down, right? So um, <clears throat> I know it seems very simplistic, but trust me, that's what's going on in these markets. And if you trade that way, it makes a lot more sense. Um, so we still have not gotten a full ATR below here. So we'll keep an eye on this. Um, so you can see here, this is exactly what I was talking about, right? So we had, this is threshold. I go I, usually around 150 threshold for NASDAQ. But you can see these swipes, like 266, 263. That, you know, if that was icebergs or stops, I'd be like, that's huge. But then the swipes are not that, that's not that big of a deal. But I'm definitely going to draw this stop zone. <clears throat> What's great about these sweeps is it really helps you draw the zone as well. So you can see I incorporated this 157 stop run right there. So now, Look at my ATR, my ATR is 20. So I need to see 20 points move away from this area to figure out what, whether it's gonna be a dumb and dumber, again, a dumb money puke, or stop and hold, All right? So we'll see. If this goes 20 points above and comes back, then that's a stop and hold. So we'll keep an eye on this. I may just draw this swipe in too. I'm just going to incorporate this swipe, even though, again, I'm not officially trading these swipes on their own, but if they're part of stop runs, I'll, uh, because that's not, this, that zone is not that big for Nasdaq, so we're only talking about an eight-point zone, it just, and then you just incorporate all this activity, right, you got this sweep, you got this sweep, you got the stop run, this was 100 stops, so this is a good zone, um, as far as, now we've got some invested traders in here, so whatever way this breaks is going to be the next potentially a big move. So we'll see how this breaks out of here as well. Um, <clears throat> you can see this thing's just ranging. Looks like we're just ranging, right? So this market has been struggling at 
back in when this this occurred, these directional convection areas, as these were really really high volume. Yeah, yes, I size for alert. And when we were, you know, at the time when that happened in my room, um, I was talking about that something had changed um, as far as the, the relative volume of these bars were quite large, and I said something's changing here, and it did lead to a pretty big move down. Of course, we we recaptured it like we always do, but the point is. That doesn't surprise me that we're stalling in this area where these came in before. So once we if we break out of here, then we're going to go to all-time highs, obviously, because this is the all-time high. But it's as of right now, it's still struggling at this area. So um, we're basically still inside of this balance. That's just a bigger picture look. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'll trade this. I'm taking this trade either way, long or short, depending on if we get the ATR out of here. So again, we're 20 points is the ATR, so I got to see 38.75. That'd be 20 points. Then I'll wait for a retest. Then I'll wait for a failure. I'll get in a three quarters ATR. Then I'll put my stop above this zone. Again, you're not always going to get the retest. This is the way I'm trading them this month. Good to show my room. Again, you can trade these in a vacuum and just do the same thing every single time, right? So I'm not being, you You could say, hey, I, I think this is a great area to get short. Just then you can short right out of here, right outside the zone and put it, you can put your stop right there. Again, how you trade these is up to you, but the, it's not, this is not up for, for discussion on what this is, right? So it's like, this is the science. The art is how you trade these zones, the way I trade them. Um, I don't always wait for retest failure. I am this month again to show my room, but, um, I, those are the highest percentage trades, right? So, but you're gonna, there's gonna be times where you have, you know, you have a great idea, a great thesis, and you're like, oh yeah, I can't wait to short this. Okay, yeah, I got it. I'm gonna wait for a retest, and then it just does that, and you're just sitting here holding the bag, like, all right, I guess I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be short today, right? So that's the risk that you take if you if you want to trade these conservatively. Yes, that your winning percentage will be much higher if you wait for a retest failure, but you may miss some trades. So you just gotta, you gotta be aware of that. All right, any questions, Bruce? I need a little break from talking. I feel like my, I'm going to pass out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so um, first off, um, boy, I'd like to do like a poll or something in here. Um, I'm getting feedback from some of you uh, saying this sucks. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> That's cool. Uh, not, and not your webinar. <laughs> I'm sorry, Scott. Um, uh, that uh, the streaming in here is is bad. It's a bad idea. You preferred go to webinar. Uh, so uh, if you guys can can let us know, uh, please. That would be really really good. Um, uh, it should be working pretty smoothly, and and the quality should be really good as well. Uh, the uh, the 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 streaming quality uh, and the sound I I, I think is um, a, a, a bit enhanced, but um, I'm looking for your, for your guys' feedback, uh, and uh, I think once we kind of get this down and, and get through some of it, um, it would be preferable, I would imagine, for you guys, and that's what we're trying to do, is just make it easier for you guys. So uh, then you have it all under one umbrella here. It's in the Discord, Bookmap Discord chat, and, and that's that. Um, so uh, uh, anyway, yeah, let, let me know, um, and uh, oh, here, Thanks, Sam. Sam put together a, like a little straw poll uh, right there. If you guys, please uh, just give us some feedback on that. That'd be really appreciated. I, I see it streaming in that you guys have, it's working pretty well uh, for you. So, um, all right. So let's get to some of these questions here. Um, a DA would like to see your um, uh, sweeps uh, settings. Um. <clears throat> Again, this is not official. Like I've just, I've only been looking at this thing for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I can, I can and kind I, of go go through it with you, Scott, as well. Uh, so. Yeah, and I have not had a chance to go in and figure out what's a lot, what's you know, I have a feeling, but um, I just have been literally in bed for nine straight days. So I want to go back and re and go back months and figure out what are the ideal thresholds for these sweeps. So right now, you know, I just threw in, hey, let's try 200 for, for CL. Again, so don't use these as... Within like, one second. Is, is, within one second, It was right. very important uh, to say that. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so minimum DA, I mean, what this means here is in, it's a, it's a very simple thing. Within one second, um, show me on a minimum of at least two price levels, okay? Uh, a minimum of 200 uh, or, um, uh, volume or more. That's it. 
Okay, so uh, if that condition is met, uh, a dot will um, pre or paint, uh, and then you can see you'll see multiple dots in Scott's stream. So um, what what that means is within one second you're getting a ton of trading activity on multiple price levels, uh, and that would be if you look at it, it's highly, highly, highly likely. Not only is it a book sweep, um, uh, but there's also a lot of stops within that getting triggered. Okay, that's more or less the gist of it. So there, like Scott had said uh, on last webinar, um, you're going to get, um, uh, you know, these all these book sweeps in here. I mean, it could be like a larger player puking. It could be them entering. Uh, and running it against themselves who knows like uh doesn't matter uh, uh but not all of these are going to be stops in there and, and typically i i'd love to find out what the percentage is more or less it really varies sometimes they a lot of them are stops other times it's like a small percentage of the book sweep uh are stops so you know, right right here's a perfect example i mean this is 200 250 to 41 but there was 800 sweeps, so there's another 600 behind this, or a little, little less, that were not stops, right? So yeah, exactly. Again, like we said, it's not. It doesn't. You guys, a lot of guys get so um, wound up and trying to understand what what someone's doing, right? And they're all like, even with the SI indicator, well, how do you know what the paper is doing? The big money's doing. They could be hedging. They could be getting out of position. They could be blah blah blah. You're never going to know ever. So it doesn't matter what they're doing. What what matters is there's someone on the other side of the trade. The area is what is important. You don't, you're, you're wasting your time if you're trying to understand what another trader or house or, or whatever is trying to accomplish in the market. It doesn't matter and you're never going to know. So just know the area and that's why we draw the zones because that's what's important. So no, no matter what happens here, <clears throat> no matter what this was, I don't care what the reason this guy swept it or this house swept it or if this was one house or 20 houses. It doesn't matter. Someone's on the other side of the trade. Somebody is, is caught in this area. Once it moves away, somebody's going to be puking. So if it moves away this way, guys that are short are going to be puking. If it moves away this way, guys that are long are going to be puking. That's how you have to view the market. You're never going to know why why guys are doing what they're doing. It's just not going to happen. You know, the closest that you can ever even come to that was back in the day, I talk about this all the time, you can see counterparty. So they did away with that in a hurry, but you can see when I first started, you can see if I would trade whatever amount of contracts, you know, I'd be just flipping this order book and I'd, I'd have it down here. You would see one of these days, I'm gonna, I gotta, I'm gonna show you guys video of me scalping in the old days, you'll love it, it's hysterical, but it's not for kids here as I can tell you that. Um, but you can see, I would drop in like a thousand lot and you would see exactly who you traded the thousand lot with, right? And, and then, you know, it was like a big poker game because most of the time it was like dead like this and you'd just be going against fellow locals. Like the local was just like a, a local trader that, you know, kind of like at the board of trade, you know, they stand in the pit, those kind of guys, right? Paper comes in, you know, these markets maybe 20% of the time, 30% of the time, the rest of the time it's just algo. Now it's algos, but back then it was like all locals. So you would see exactly like it would like my house number, or my my um, my clearing house was 023. My nemesis was 990. Right, so don't even get me started on the stories with this clown. But um, you know when I would drop in a thousand, I'd look, I just look down and I would see 182 were 990. Okay, so that tells me right. It's like okay, this guy is now we're battling, right? And then I drop another thousand, and then I'd see. 900 of those thousand were 990. Well, it comes to a point once you're in here every single day and you can see exactly what you know who you're trading with. I would know when the guy was, was loaded up, right? It was like a poker game, and then I would so that I, you know, if, if it was going in my favor, I'd drop some more in, and then it'd be more 990. I'm like, okay, you're done, dude. And I it would be like real quiet. You can this is why I'm always talking about guys, so you can tell when guys are holding their, holding their breath, that's where that comes from. And I can tell, like, then the guy wouldn't he'd be silent, right? And then it would. So say I was selling the whole time, so this guy, this 990 was long, and it would start to drift down, and then there'd just be nothing, no activity from him, and I knew I had him, right? And I would like, then I would start to, um, my activity, I would, I would start to like sell more and more and more, just not a ton, just to make it look like the market's really trading, and then guys would jump in on my coattails, and then he'd just turn around and puke out like 3,000 of them, right? And he did, he would do the same to me. So it's like, that was the only way you're you're ever gonna know what 
what somebody is doing in the market and that doesn't exist anymore. So that's my point. Like you're never, ever going to know that, you know, paper caught on real quick that that was not to their benefit to be for people to be able to see what they were doing. Um, so they lobby the CME and the CME got rid of that, got rid of that edge. But, you know, that was the only way you can ever understand, know what anyone was doing and it doesn't exist. So my point is don't get wrapped up of trying to understand what is trying to be accomplished in here? Just know that traders are caught, right? And, you know, once again, you can feel the, the breath holding. It's kind of just sitting here. Trust me, whatever way this breaks, is probably going to be a big move, right? Because this is by far the most volume that is traded all day long in crude. And the same in NASDAQ. <clears throat> We're just sitting here. We still haven't gotten ATR below here. And either one. Um, ATR is shrunk now to 18.56. So I'll just keep it at 19 for right now. So we need to see 19 points. Or nine, yeah, 19 points below this. So that's 38, 50, 39, 50 we need to see. And we still have not got down, down there. So I need to see 39.50. Then I'm going to wait for a retest, hopefully. And then failure, then I'll go short. Again, it may not retest. And then I'll just, I'm not taking that trade, right? That's the risk that you take if you wait. But I can tell you, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache of trying to preemptively jump in where you're like, you know what? All right, that was a stop run. Okay, they're immediately wrong. 520 stops. I'm getting in right here, right? You're going to, you, you, it's just, again, this is just a, the higher percentage trade to wait for the retest, but you are going to miss some trades if you do that again. <clears throat> so we still don't know what's happening there either. <clears throat> Heard some that gas stuff. Let's take a look at that gas. And there's more questions whenever whenever you're ready, Scott. Yeah, fire fire away. Okay. Uh, well, uh, just to finish up <laughs> part two of DA's question, uh, he's also asking about uh, uh, the stops and icebergs settings, but. Uh, I would uh, uh, first ask you on that. I mean, no, that's proprietary information and part of your course, and we're so tired of doing that since we've been doing that for months um, in the past like uh, um, I'll leave it up, up to you it, you I'll, you have Scott's email um, if you don't I'm putting it right into the chat right now uh, uh, DA so um, you can ask him directly yeah I mean yeah I get I'm getting emails all the time on that and it's like that's part of my course and you got to remember you know people a lot of people have bought that course, right? And they bought the course for the threshold. So it's not fair to those people for me to be handing out, you know, there's like 23 different products that are, there's thresholds in the course. Like it's not fair to those guys that paid for the course if I'm just dishing out that information now, right? So, you know, if you want the thresholds and you want to learn the setups, get the course. Um, I'm trying to come up with a new a new course. Uh, you know, it's probably not going to be for a couple months. Um, kind of an update and then I'm going to incorporate the sweeps and everything else. But you know, if you want all the thresholds and you want to learn this stuff, the, the setups, instead of trying to piece together just in these webinars, which is highly recommended, then just get the course. I mean, it's not for a relation of what you, what you make when you trade. Like, it's not it's not that big of a deal. It's cost wise, in my opinion, as far as the value you get from it. But and also, if you remember my room, you also get a discount for that. But you know, those of you who keep emailing me for the for the thresholds, it's like it's not fair to the people that bought the course. So. Get the course is what I'm saying. All right, what else, Bruce? <clears throat> I mean, I'll give you it here. So, you there, Bruce? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll give you a, the main. I'll give you a ES and NQ, right? So ES, I use 500, and this is not. This is pretty common knowledge, right? So I use 500 and 700. Icebergs 700, 500 for stops, and Q I use 150 for both, right? So again, my course covers 22 different futures markets, and it was just me going and, and researching all these markets, and literally almost two years later, the the thresholds are pretty much spot on. Um, there's a couple that have changed a little bit, but they're all pretty much exactly as how I made when I made the course. Okay. What else, Bruce? Um. <clears throat> Yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, David uh, and uh, others are, are concerned of your health. Um, <laughs> so uh, tell me about it. I, I gotta. You you don't you sound you, yeah you don't sound well. So this I'm, is actually good. You should ask my room on Monday. I couldn't even I couldn't even talk. Wow. 
it's not even the voice. Like I, I seriously, I sit here for 20 minutes and I, I'll have to go, I have to go lay down. That's how, and it's been nine days. I've never in my life have had a sickness. Wow. I mean, I felt this bad before, but not for this prolonged of a period. Like it, this is unbelievable. And I, there's a, there's a bad flu virus going around in, in uh, Arizona. Hmm. Um, like some different type of strain, or even if you I wasn't vaccinated, but even if you were vaccinated, I guess it doesn't help. It sounds like something else. Like, with the vaccination. Yeah, yeah, size, size, um, high alert at NG, 151 contracts. Yeah, I've just never experienced anything like this. I had a doctor call me in some medicine the other day. I thought I was on my way back, and it's just has not done anything for me. So it's brutal. My whole family's got it. <clears throat> but thank you for your concern. And, and, and yes, I feel I feel worse. I feel just as bad as I sound, if not worse. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, uh, there's a question here about your your profit taking. Uh, you can see monster, huge icebergs coming wow. in. Uh, Massive. Net gas. I don't I don't trade net gas very often, but I've been watching it a lot more often lately because it's been it's had a lot of activity. You can see this is a pretty tight zone for all this ice coming in. Look at this. Wow. Look at that. See that? Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. That's someone That's getting cool. really stuffed there. Yeah. Somebody, well, sorry, yes, yeah, or someone just puked them out. Yeah. And so that was, let me see, did I get that right? No. So this is, you know, this is the advantage, right? Like you're staring at a bar chart, you have no idea what's going on in this market. Well, the Scott, thing is I want to you know, I mean, the, this is a really, really great example. Um, uh, I totally agree. I mean, like Bookmap is showing you um, many other details that your candlestick chart or other charts are not going to show, but. Uh, um, you know, and, and we have an idea of what it is, but um, your expertise and your experience, what it, what's the story that you see here uh, in this, uh, in this um, uh, order flow phenomena? As far as this exact instance? Yeah. Well, it looks to me like someone, you know, someone was selling it like crazy and paper was trying to buy it. And then this was either a puke right here or... Someone just, paper just dropped in another, you know, 281. I can't really tell it, so let's see what this is. That wasn't a, see, this is the problem, right? So I have, I just put this at 200, let's make it 300. Um, so this, this is a good example. Of, you know, I don't know what just happened there. I know paper just came in, and I know this is a ton of icebergs for natural gas. The threshold for this is like 100. This is 633, right? So this is, you know, when you guys start to be like, oh, it's, uh, you know, paper's always right, I'm gonna buy it. Well, right there, paper was not right, right? So they tried to buy 600 and then someone just came in and swept this thing. So, but you see how, how this sweep disappeared when I changed the uh, value, I'll put this back to 200. Um, so, I, you know, I don't really know what happened there. I know paper tried to buy it and I don't know if they said, Oh no, and puked out some of them or what? But this is this is very interesting. So this is a perfect example. I mean, usually it doesn't happen this fast. This thing just dropped 30, 30 plus ticks, right? So this is definitely an ATR. I'll, I'll try to find that chart here in a second. But on any kind of retest a failure, I'm going short this market because these guys are screwed, right? They try to stop the market right there, and they're wrong again. I don't know if this was them puking out some of them, but. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to incorporate this sweep in, in my zone because I want to you know, stay consistent in these zones. But any kind of retest failure, I will be short this market because this this paper is not right <laughs> there. Whoever was just jumped in there just got crushed. Yeah. So let's see if we can find the on chart. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I think that's a, um, a really good point. Like uh, um, I'm kind of I kind of put you on the spot there uh, and, and asked, you know, due to your experience and expertise, like what happened there? And you go, well, I think this, but I don't know. Um, uh, however, nobody does. <laughs> and nobody does. Uh, however, uh, uh, you know, you, you have some ideas. Um, yet what's important here is the event. 
the event has now unfolded. Now, what happens after the event is the key um, uh, to, uh, you know, how you want to trade this and, and, and use this as an edge. Uh, so uh, I, I know you talk about that a lot, uh, but um, uh, anyway, I just wanted to, to reiterate or, or mention it in here. Right, exactly. The event was the huge icebergs, and it usually doesn't happen this fast, but it, it did, right? So you just saw that ATR. Um, ATR is 24.83, 24 so we'll say 25, right? 25 ticks. The top of this zone was, or the bottom of the zone was 97. So 77, 72 was an ATR. So we definitely got an ATR or an ATR below the zone. So now this is an official broken ice. This is one of the five setups, right? Iceberg took a stand, broken ice, got crushed, right? Or you can call it crushed ice if you want. And now we got the ATR. Now I'm looking for a retest failure and I will go short and I'm gonna pull my stop. Um, I used to be a full ATR above here. I, I just, you can make it a half ATR or three quarters. I'll go three quarters ATR above this zone if I end up getting short. And I expect a big move because this is a lot of size. So when these guys end up puking this stuff out, it's the you know that's the energy that causes the big move. So <clears throat> we'll watch for a retest there. You can see on crude, we got an ATR below here. Now I'm just waiting for the retest of this zone. It's like I said, there is a chance it won't retest. Crude is the number one market that does retest. So I never ever chase these markets. You know, if it comes back, great, that's what I want. If not, then I miss this trade and I move on to the next one. So again, ATR is 17 ticks. <clears throat> the bottom of the zone was 30, so we needed to see 13. That was the ATR right there, All right? Even further. So now I'm hoping we can get a retest failure. If not, you know, this is still, regardless, this is a dumb and dumber, right? You got this, the stop run puke, no follow through, no, no, the paper. So again, paper can see, they have developers just like Bookmap and they, they can see this stuff and they know, you know, if paper wants to really buy, they can see, hey, you know, here's retail puke. Now we can just, you know, step on the gas and continue it higher. Well, why didn't they? Well, because they're not interested in buying there. That's, that was just a puke. A stop run puke that didn't get any vowel through. That's a dumb and dumber, right? So, um, so again, you could have just got in and a half ATR, and you'd already be, you know, forty ticks in the money. I'm the way I'm playing these for this month for my room is waiting for retest failure, and I may not get it. Again, crude is the number one market that does the number one market that does the retest. So, this is why I'm telling you, you have to decide. And you may you may have come in today so bearish and you're like, you know what, all I need to see is something. And the minute we get below there, I'm in. Right. So that's what you have to decide as a trader. And how once you learn how to trade these or, or identify them, how you want to trade them. Right. Because I may miss this short. I mean, it may not come back to the zone. And it's fine because trust me, there's another one right around the corner. Maybe not on a day like today because it's the worst trade I've ever seen. But most days there's one right around the corner. So we're waiting for a retest in both crude and natural gas here. Look at the, this is the one that you got to understand though. So we've always I've said this since day one. We call this the Christmas tree. Look, look, look at this market. This is all this is is algos, algorithmic, right? The more you see this, the more you you can expect this, right? So you know I'll still trade this, but you could just got to be ready. This is one of the number number one algo run markets out there. And you can see it right there, right? When you look at a chart and it looks like a Christmas tree, you know it's Algo City, right? So the point is, doesn't mean you still you don't trade these, but you know most traders can't. So say this comes back up here, everyone's waiting and everyone's mirroring me today, which again we we um, advise not mirroring my trading <clears throat> and learning this stuff for yourself. But say you didn't mirror mirror me and I got I get short, and then it does this. And then in this, and then this. Well, you've got to expect that to happen because because of this. That's what that's what's going to happen. And if you know that going into it, you're not panicking out of your trades, right? You're not like, you know, losing your mind on the whipsaws because that you're going to get whipsawed. So you is all you got to do is look at your market to know. Okay, if I elect to trade this market today, I am fully expecting a whipsaw in this market because of this, right? The algos run. Algos are at least 80% of all trade, right? In this market, they're probably... Soybean ice spread sells, yes. 200 contracts. They're probably 90%.
Right, and all you got to do is take one look. If it looks like a Christmas tree, again, just be ready for like a bucking Bronco type of trade where, you know, you're not getting panicked out. That's why you use your ATRs. And so say this comes back and it retests and it fails and I get short, my stop's going to go three quarters of an ATR above the zone. And then I just let it ride, right? And it could go do this and then come all the way back and then this and then all the way back. And I'm not going to do anything until I hit my, my profit targets. Um, and I'm fully going to expect that because of what I see here. This is all algos. I think you were asking something earlier about profit target or something, Bruce. What was the question on that? Yeah, there's uh, a few questions on ATR and handling uh, uh, your profits and um, uh, stop losses, <laughs> etc. cetera. But uh, um, uh, yeah, let me get to exactly to the question here. Hold on. Okay, when you have set your zones uh, and price is going back to test the zone and it fails, uh, and as it gets closer to the three quarters of your ATR way to enter the trade, uh, some new ice comes in to meet the criteria of setting a new zone. Uh, how do you treat this situation? Keep the original zone, uh, add a new zone, or reset the entire zone? Yeah, that happens all the time, right? So I'll, I'll draw the new zone and I'll play off that zone. So say... <clears throat> So say say this happens here, say it comes back, say I get short, and then say it goes a little lower and all of a sudden I get a brand new setup, right? So say this comes in again, same same size. Now I'll, I'll, I will base, you know, I'll just, I'll have the original position on, but if this, so I'll be, so I'll be short, right? So if I see some new buy ice come in, well now I'm going to, just a half ATR above this zone, I will be out of the trade, right? Um, because this is a brand new setup. So I used to be a full ATR, right? But I'm a half ATR because look, if this, if I'm short here, if I get short and then something new comes in, okay, and then it breaks above, well, that's bullish, right? So that's an opposite, opposing signal. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm out, right? And so I'll, I'll get back in. So say for instance, because we don't know, we have to wait for a full ATR to determine what this is, right? But I will get out at a half ATR if this comes in after I'm short and I see this, I'll get out at a half ATR right away. The minute it pops a half ATR above this zone, I'm out and then I'll reassess. Meaning it could go only a half ATR and then get back below here. And then I'll look for an ATR retest and then I'll just get back in the trade, right? Um, so yeah, you're gonna cost yourself from here to from there to get back short again, um, but it's better than you know. I don't want to. I don't want to, This is an opposing setup, so uh, that's probably confusing to you guys. So the, the way I'm, the way I'm, I trade these, right, is I will wait for. So I'm short. Say just in a vacuum, nothing else happens. If this ever gets up here, maybe I can show you. I, I'll get short. So now I will for my first profit target for half my position. I'll put on a four lot on this trade. Half my position, <clears throat> I will get out at an hourly ATR. Right. So you go to your hourly ATR. You should have this all in mind before you put out your trade so you're not scrambling to figure out. So you can see hourly ATR is 62 ticks, say 63 ticks, right? So from below this zone, right? So I will get out 63 ticks below this, right? So 97, 37, 34. So my first target would be right around here for a short, right? Remember, I'm getting short this. This is all in a vacuum. Then I will hold half of it until I see an opposing setup. Like you were just talking what happened here. Well, what if it doesn't happen there? Well, there's been days, especially in the last month, where I've caught trades um, or I'm following this exact system where I do not get out of the other half until I see an opposing setup, right? And it's just such a peace of mind way to trade where you're not like, you know, you're not getting algo where you get this huge move and you're like, oh, it's coming back. Okay, I, sh I should get out. I don't want to throw away my profit. I don't even, I don't even care. It's like I, I, got, I get out of half. At the hourly ATR, and then I let it ride. And you can get two, three, four hundred tick moves before you get an opposing setup. So the minute I see a bullish setup come in and it pops a half ATR above there, then I'll be out of the trade. Right? That could be 300 ticks away. That could be 30 ticks away from the zone. It, it, it depends. Right? So the, what I'll do is, again, if something. Um, if that if, if this comes back and I get short and something comes in right away, bullish, or any kind of setup, right? 
to say the same thing comes in again, like I just said, right? So then I, if it pops in half ATR above here, I will get out of the trade, out of my short, and I'll just reassess. Because technically, I still don't know what this is, right? A half ATR is not telling me what this is. It still could be uh, end up as a broken ice setup like this one, right? But I, I don't want to see this go full ATR. I don't need to do that. I'll just get out. And then there's a, there's a way that this turns into broken ice again. Say it just only goes half ATR. Say it stops me out. And I'm out of my short. Well, we, again, we don't know what this setup is yet. Then it does this, and it goes a full ATR, and then a retest and a failure. Well, now we know that's broken ice just like this one, and I'll just get back in. Yeah, I cost myself from getting out to getting back in, but I just didn't risk it just flipping up and, and flying up higher on a bullish setup. You see what I'm saying? So <clears throat> does that make sense, Bruce? Or whoever's asking the question? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot lot of questions around the ATR. Um, and I... Um, hmm, uh, you guys may want to reach out to Scott um, in his email. And I'll, I'll also add to this as well, right? So it's like, if I'm, so again, if this ever does this and I'm, I end up getting short and then I get this set up and another one happens and it does this, well, this is a brand new trade. I'll put on another position and then my stop for both. And I'll trail my stop from this one down here. And then my stop from this one will be in the same spot. So now I'll have two positions and there's ways, there's going to be days where you keep getting set up after setup, after setup, after setup, and you can cut this, this would be a month you're making day. And that's what you strive for as a trader, right? Your, your whole goal as a trader is to kind of tread water, make a little, little lose a little, because that's how markets are. It's, you're never gonna have a consistent income. We talk about this all the time, right? Make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little, and then when you finally catch the trade that, that just keeps coming in, coming in, and you keep adding, adding, and then you, you have like an outsized, month making year making day that's that's what you're striving for right again they don't happen that often but when they do you're, you'll have like four or five six of them in a year and that makes your entire year but i will add to this trade if something new if i was you know again i'm short and i see something new and the same thing happens well i'll put on a brand new position because this is a whole new setup but i will get out of a half atr once something new comes in and just reassess is what the way i do it meaning i don't wait for a full atr um, to get out of the trade with an opposing setup. I hope that makes sense again. Yeah, and 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 this is like um a technically like you know kind of sounds kind of complex. I mean, but it's it's really simple in terms of what you're doing conceptually. Uh, uh, Nothing I do is complex. Trust me, and I and it's by design. Yeah. You know, I don't. I've always said from day one that's why I gravitated towards trading. You know, when I was a scalper. I didn't even have charts up. I would stare at this order book all day long. And back then, it, it was meaningful. It meant something. Nowadays, nice for nowadays it doesn't mean anything, right? Because the algos. But everything I do is very simplistic in trading. And that's what I'm trying to show you guys is the simpler you make it, the better you're going to do. The more complicated you make things, as far as lines in your chart and questioning why this is happening, blah, 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 the worse you're going to do. So nothing I do is is... It may sound confusing right now, but we watch a couple of these webinars and you'll understand what I'm doing. It's not, there's nothing complicated about it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, if you guys don't mind, I think we'll kind of move on from uh, all the kind of uh, uh, technical uh, details on the ATR. Um, and, uh, you know, may maybe reach out to Scott or, or you know, uh, I don't know if you know you want to follow him in his room uh, and and watch him go through many examples of that uh, to understand his ATR strategies. Uh, but uh, he's been he's been doing the same thing for uh, all of these webinars. Uh, he's just now applying more kind of a standard to it with ATR. But it's been the same stuff um, all all the way through. Uh, right. I used to have standards for the market, so I used to be like you know. 10 points, so I would wait for the, the zone and in, in NASDAQ, and if it moved 10 points away, that was my, you know, quote-unquote ATR. Um, 10 points is a decent, you know, that's a decent way to do it, but, you know, the more I did this, it, it's just not, it's not dynamic. It's not adjusting to the volatility of the day, so that's when I started using ATR, probably, probably at the beginning of the year is when I started using ATR. <clears throat> But I mean, what, like, what are the other questions? Like, what what are people not understanding? Okay, about ATR okay, well, and then we'll go through them. Um, uh, yeah. Do you use one to ATR to take profit? I use an hourly ATR to, to get out of half. Okay. Um, so I'm using the five minute ATR to decide 
the zones, and then I get out of half my position in an hourly ATR, and then I leave the other half ride until I see an opposing setup. Okay. Um, well, I'm sorry. More specifically, is like, what is Scott's profit taking one ta one ATR after you enter the trade? So, sorry, that was. So a after you enter the trade, are you looking at to, to take profit at one ATR from your entry? No, I get in. I, I'm looking to take profit at one hourly ATR from the bottom of the zone. Right? So if I end up getting short this NASDAQ trade, if it ever comes back, again, this one didn't retest either. It probably will, but NASDAQ ATR right now, you can see down here at the bottom right, 51.71 and so we'll say 52 points so i will i go to the bottom of this zone which is 5850 i go 52 points below there right so that'll be 0650 so my first i will get out of half at 0650 so if this comes back retest the zone i will get out of half at 0650 so I go a full hourly ATR from below the bottom of the zone to get out of half. And then I hold the other half until I see something bullish, a setup that's bullish, which could happen again. If this does this and I get short, that bullish setup could happen right here. And then I got to get out. Or it can go another 400 points before I see a bullish setup, <laughs> right? So <clears throat> so I'll, I'll get out of the full thing. I may not, you know, again, so say this comes up here and I get short. Well, I'm, I'm looking for a full hourly ATR for half, but say something bullish comes in right here and it, does, it pops in a half ATR above there, I'm, I'm out of the full trade, right? So I'm hoping for at least an hourly ATR for half, but I may be out of the trade immediately if a, a bullish setup comes in and some, and they do all the time, right? Sometimes they don't. And sometimes this will go three, 400 points and you're still in the trade and you're not questioning it. You're just like, this is my rules. And it, it is awesome. It's just, it's such a relief to like, you know, you get out of it, you have like a standard for the, for the, for half of them. For, I'm talking about myself. And then the other half, I'm waiting for an opposing signal that again, I, I've caught three or four huge moves in this past month just because I just didn't get out until I saw an opposing setup. Right? And it just helps you not like panic out every time the algos decide to algo you because that's what they want you to do. Your food for the algos when you do that. Right, right. And it, it, absolutely. I mean, it makes uh, pure sense. I mean, just, just because um, uh, you're also, um, the order flow shifts, it changes, it's dynamic. Uh, the equation change, oh, I don't want to use that word. Um, uh, the environment changes. Uh, and um, uh, when it does, you're reacting to it. So, um, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah, pretty, 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 um, straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, David, I, I think you just answered this, but, uh, uh David was asking, uh, how do you incorporate the ATR in, in determining the rotations? I don't understand that question either. <laughs> I guess, I guess swings, um, uh, rotations from top to bottom swings. Uh, but, but what do you mean? How do I incorporate it? I don't understand. Okay. Um, well, uh, David's typing right now. Um, okay. And let's see anything else. <coughs> Do you take Let's one ATR just... on exits and entries? Yeah, we already answered this. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, you know, it looks like he, he you, you answered it, uh, so we're all set. Uh, we're all, we're all okay. caught up, I think, on, on questions here. Okay. Yeah. All right, so again, this still hasn't retested this zone. Um, this is natural gas. Still hasn't gotten back up here, so, you know. But what we did, though, and this may not get back up here because if you, if you look at this, this is where these snakes are going to be really important. When you dig it. They tear below there and then came right back into the stake area kind of rejected so i'm hoping we get back up in here i mean i'm not trading off of this these this uh these sweeps but you know, the more you watch this you can say hey you know what <clears throat> i want to get short this market but i see that someone got swept here anywhere in this in this sweep area and then it moves back out i want to go short 
I'm not, I don't need to wait and see it come all the way back up to the zone. Okay, these are just hypothetical things. Again, I need, I need to do a lot more research on the best way to trade these sweeps, but there, it, there is, there is a reason why this probably stopped right here, right? And they get up here because this is right where this sweep zone happened. Yeah, in fact, um, Scott, zoom into that sweep there because this is kind of interesting. Uh, um, the way that the 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 indicator is set up and what it, how it's displaying it is it's is trying to show you the the, the book sweeps of kind of a, a singular uh, or atomic event, um, and uh, yeah, in this case, uh, if you, if you can can you show also best bid and offer? I don't know if you have that on here. Yeah, go up. No, to a tool just to the right, or left of your uh, trading. Uh, uh, the the plat. The um, yeah, that one. Um, the padlock icon just to the left of it. <laughs> Click on that, and then show best bid and offer. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's a couple of events in here, um, and the sweep. This is where like the if you cut down the time on the sweep. Um, you're going to get rid of some of these little ones in that seven and, and stuff kind of in the middle. Um, it, and it might, might be better uh, because right now you have one second, which is quite a bit. Uh, and um, uh, what that does is it will, it kind of aggregates two different events in, in together. Put, put input like a point one. Yeah, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now try, go back and then put in a point five or, or or something um i'm just curious here we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to it um the uh uh by trial and error here hmm interesting all right so i mean uh, but the 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 concept here is in, in that retest to that area you were just talking about um makes really good sense because if there is a book sweep you know that is one event and it's showing you where that event is um, ending uh, and then you can a lot of times we see retest back to those areas where those events took place precisely back to those areas so um, it, it, exactly. what's that exactly that's that's the whole premise of the zones it's it, the same thing it's, exactly it's areas that guys that traders got run over that when it comes back to like say for this you know, I don't think this is a lot for Nasdaq but again guys that got run over here you see the cell bubbles right the white, the white um, circles are responsive buyers, meaning they were just resting in the order book that got run over. Well, when it moves away, the guys that got run over here are like, oh crap, that wasn't supposed to happen. This was, uh, my orders are supposed to hold this market. You got to, you have to view it like that. So when it comes back many times to that area, and then it fails. So this is the same premise I was telling you guys earlier, how the guys that get run over when it gets it goes far enough against them, they're like, okay, that wasn't correct. Please come back so I can scratch the trade. I want to. I'm long. It moves away. Oh, that that didn't work. We just moved 40 points against me. Okay, when we come back, I'm going to pull my offers in and try to get out of these. And then if it comes back and starts to run away, then the guys that didn't get filled to, to scratch their trade, then they turn around and they have to start to puke out when they're waiting for it to come back. Right. So, meaning it doesn't always it doesn't always come back, but a lot of guys hold their breath until it does, or sometimes it'll just do this and then it'll go far enough and then they'll just have to start to puke because it's not coming back, right? So this is the whole premise of, of trading, right? And the zones and everything else. This is an area that traders are caught. So if you're long here, you and you, you say you just said, okay, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy, I got a ton in the order book. And you get run over, just act like you're the big trader. You get run over for 351 contracts here in the NASDAQ and it goes, 30 plus points against you. Well, what are you What are you saying right now? You're like, oh my God, please come back. Please come back. I don't even, this is exactly what I used to say. I don't even need to make a profit. If this, if this comes back to my area, I am going to just scratch the trade to break even and I'll, I'll move on to my next trade, right? So you sit here and hold your breath. It starts to come back. You're like, okay, thank, oh, thank God. And then you see this, right? And then they're like, the minute it starts to run away, the guys that couldn't get out, then they, then they go to the market to, to exit this position and then, then you get that next wave down that's the whole premise for all these setups right and it works with snakes too again i don't think this is enough um is to play this as a zone uh, again i'll know more in the next couple of weeks and more research i do but that's the premise guys you have to view the market like that just pretend you're this big trader and you get run over for 350 what are you thinking and it does that 
you're like, oh, that wasn't right. Um, I kind of wish I didn't buy there. Please come back to this area so I can get out of the trade. And then it comes back to the area and you try to you try to put some offers in and you get filled on some of them. But then the market starts to turn and you're like, okay, I got to go to market now to get out of these. Right? So that's the whole premise of it. And you'll be amazed at how many times you see this exact pattern, whether it be the snakes or the zones or anything else. That's the whole idea of the retest failure. It's just, it comes back to the area and guys try to get out and then they have to chase it to, they got to go to the market if they can't get their fills. So, so what you're telling me then is if, if, if these uh, nicely highlight the zones for you, we don't have to develop the zone tool that you requested. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. That's <laughs> where I was leading. But uh, anyway, I'm sorry about that. Um. <laughs> no, if I can have that, then everyone can have my zones. That's what, I, that's what I'm waiting for you guys to do. So then I can have a universal, you know, if I draw a zone, whoever has that add-on, it's the zones automatically drawn on their chart. That yeah. would be a gift for everybody. Yeah. I mean, I'd be doing all the work, but then you guys wouldn't have to worry about drawing zones. They just automatically appear in your chart. Still waiting. Still waiting, Bruce. <laughs> I, I I put it in. Uh, we're up to our gills in development at the moment. Uh, uh, but um, uh, anyway. All right. So let's see. Uh, get a retest here. Oh, there you go. Crap. Well, I'm going to jump in this. I'm pretty sure this is. All right. So this is exactly what we talk about. I can't believe how. I mean, look at this. This is. This looks like a Christmas tree. All right, so I probably missed this by a little bit. Um, so this is exactly what we talk about, guys. Right, this is it. And you don't chase it. You wait. Right, here you go. You got this. You got this. Actually, let's turn this back so we can see the... Uh... All right. <laughs> Look at these sweeps here. Someone swept it right back. Um... And I'm not playing these sweeps. I was playing this monster ice zone that got crushed. Crushed ice. Here's your retest. Here's your failure. So I should have been in. So again, ATR right now is 23.4. So just say 24 points. So 12 points below our ticks. I'm sorry. 12, 12 ticks below here. So I should have, my entry should have been at the bottom of the zone was 97. I should have been in um, 90 or 85. So I was close. I missed it by a couple ticks. So I should have been in an 85. I was in at 82-ish. Okay, so now I'm short. This is exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. Right? There you go. Here's your retest. Here's your failure. Now I'm expecting that because of that. And you also had that and that. There's a lot of traders caught in this area. So I'm expecting a big move here. <clears throat> now my stop is going to go three quarters of an ATR above this zone. So Again, ATR is 24, so I'm going to go 12 ticks plus another half, so 18 ticks above this zone. So my stop is going to go at 23. There you go. And that's how I trade it. So now, again, ATR, hourly ATR is 60.89, so we'll say 60, 61 ticks from the bottom of this zone. So the bottom of the zone is 97. I'm just using the last two digits. So 60 ticks is um, 37, 36. So I come down here to 36, get half. That's where I'm getting out of half. And then I will hold the rest until I see an opposing setup. Again, if opposing setup comes in right now, Again, so say more buy ice comes in. I draw the zone. It pops a half ATR above there. You can go three quarters. I'm out of the trade. Or this can go fill me, fill me here and just keep going and going and going. And I'm not going to get out of the other half until I see an opposing setup, which could be 300 ticks away. But it, it's just so, it's such a comfort to just follow your plan, especially this, this market. I'm telling you right now, even if this does go to 300 ticks today, look, look at this algo. Like you are going... You're better off not even watching it because you will go crazy, like watching the 
where you know it's in your favor you're like yeah my pno is awesome oh oh no it came all the way back oh there it goes in oh no that's exactly i'm already expecting that with this trade because i know this is one of the number one algo markets out there and all you got to do again is look at your chart look at that thing again it looks like a christmas tree that all that is is algos putting in pulling putting in pulling <clears throat> all right so short that well, and and with these like sweeps, that, uh, I mean, clearly some some massive traders battling each other in there is what it looks like to me. But um, right, and that's what you want because then that's yeah. the fuel. Somebody's right, somebody's wrong. Right. That's the fuel for the move. Yeah, really, right? really, really nice setup, Scott. And again, it doesn't matter. There's just so many traders that waste nice waste their time idea. looking at this like. Wait, what was that? What were they trying to do there? Wait, wait, but then they came back here and they might be buying now. And I, I don't know if, do I want to go? It doesn't matter. It's the area. Somebody is caught. When it moves away, you, that's where you get the big move. This is the fuel. This is the fuel. That's the fuel. That's the fuel. So it, whether it's in this way or this way, that's where you get the big moves because guys have to get the hell out of their positions. That's all trading is, guys. And I know it seems simplistic, but I'm telling you, that's what you need, how you have to view the market. Because that's what's going on. <clears throat> All right, so we never got a retest of this zone uh, after the ATR. This is definitely an ATR in NASDAQ, but we never, still haven't retested it. I'm almost positive it will. This market's so bullish, it will come back, you know. Um, so, you know, if I get, so there's probably questions, well, what if something new happens? Will I, will I play this? No, because this is the newest volume setup, right? So, Something new comes in, I'm not going to play this zone anymore because something new has occurred, right? So, but if it just sits here quiet and does nothing, if it comes up and retests, I still will short it. But if something new comes in, I'm going to divert to the newest setup, right? So this is actually very odd for, for crude not to come back and retest this zone. Again, 90% of the time, crude is the number one market to retest. I would have bet anything that we got the retest of this zone by now. So, but again, you could have said, wow, 811 swipes. Wow, stop run, dumb and dumber. I'm going to jump in half ATR. I'm just going to get in right here. I'll just, I'm going to put my stop right above that zone, see if I can catch something. Well, if you did that, you got 70 tick trade in your pocket right now, right? I elected to wait for a retest failure. I didn't get it. It sucks, but this is how I'm trading it. My point is, you have the, you have the area. How you want to trade the area is up to you. There's going to be times where you want to be aggressive. You've seen on these webinars over the last year, I have been aggressive out of the zones. And there's other things. I'm playing it differently now because I'm trying to show my room. You can just wait. You're going to miss trades being being conservative, waiting for retests. But it's fine. There's always, and that's why you want to be watching multiple markets. If you guys are pigeonholing yourself into watching the crappy E-mini S&P all day long with no, nothing else, then you deserve to be, you know, tortured. There's no reason just to be staring at this clown market. I, I hate this is my most hated market. And this is where I made millions of dollars in, right? You need to have, I mean, it depends on your bandwidth. I understand some people can't watch, you know, five markets at a time. But all you do is you sit there and you have three, four, five markets that you that you pay attention to and you wait for your setups. And if you don't get into one or if you miss the trade in one, okay, I missed this one, but I got the one in natural gas, right? Then you move on to the, to the next one. And you would just wait for your setups. It doesn't matter what market you're trading. Any futures market is the same exact thing. That's why my course goes over all of the set the setups and has thresholds for all the products because it's the same. The only thing that changes are the thresholds. Meaning, you know, obviously, you know, 600 is a ton in natural gas. You know, for this um, that's uh, iceberg that we just saw. You know, six. Why can't I find that market? That's why it's up here. Um, you know, this is an absolute ton for natural gas. If you saw 600 ice in uh, in ES, that's not even that's not even threshold. So that's the only thing that changes is the threshold in in the particular market, right? Other than that, guys, it's volume. Volume runs the show. So if you understand how to read the volume, you can trade any one of these. Let's see if I missed a trade here. This is just, and again, some days you're just going to have confusing markets, right? Like this has just been coming in 
this buy ice, sell ice, buy ice, sell ice all day. It's like, don't trade it. So if you're just staring at soybeans today and that's your only market, then well, then you're screwed and you got nothing to do. You're just like, this is confusing me. Markets aren't always just straightforward, slap you in the face setups, right? Like this is, this is confusing me. Like, it's like, okay, um, well, you had all that ice here and then you had more ice here. 245 and you can see the swipes and there's more ice here am i supposed to make this a 20 point zone no 20 cent zone right so it's like some days the markets just aren't making sense move on so i'm not trading that market today i don't like the way that's trading right. <clears throat> so this this is not dead yet i still think we're going to retest this crude zone but We'll see. Any other questions, Bruce? I'm definitely running out of gas. Yeah, yeah. You've almost been going an hour and a half now. Um, Sam has some questions here uh, asking that some of the snakes will be traders taking profits too, right? Or, or some uh, short exits, not just long entries, correct? Yeah, but there's all, if, if you see a sweep, there's someone, someone's getting out, someone's getting swept, right? There's always someone on the other side of the trade. So that's what I'm saying. Don't confuse yourself. Try and understand what people are trying to do, what it is. What was this? Oh, was this, this, was a, this was a buy sweep here. There was responsive sellers. Well, the sellers, want, they want to get short, so I don't know what I want to do here. The buyer, it doesn't matter. It's the area. Somebody swept. Somebody got swept. Somebody swept. Somebody got swept. It's the area. Some people, traders are placing bets, and when one of them's wrong, they have to puke. That's that's what trading is. Sounds like a bar crawl. <laughs> um, but don't don't get too caught up in the snakes. I call them snakes. The sweeps yet again. I you know they're definitely very very powerful. But you just got to make sure you know your thresholds with these things. Let's see if we get filled on this before I get off here. Um, <clears throat> But it's, it's definitely, you know, they're definitely important. But the, the main driver of my trading is still the SI indicator, right? This, this was a beautiful <laughs> trade, Scott. Really, really nice. I'm not out of it yet. Don't yeah. be jinxing me, Bruce. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, this trade sucks. <laughs> well, no, but this, this, is, this is exactly what I'm talking about, right? So... You know, most traders are like, oh, well, you know what? This is close enough. I don't I don't want to see this thing go like this. In this market, out of any markets, this can easily come straight back and not fill me right yeah, now. True. Right? So I'm the only way I would move this this stop is if the ATR shrinks or expands. Right? So just and then I just leave it in. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna let the algo screw with my head. I, I have my rules. Where's it? Gee. Sixty-two point five four, so sixty-three ticks. So what did I say this was? Ninety-seven, ninety-seven, thirty-seven, thirty-four. So actually, I can make this. I can even go further because it, it it expanded. Most traders are doing the opposite, right? Most traders are like being tortured. If you guys got short on this, how many of you guys are like covering right here because you don't want to see it do that, right? <laughs> and I already know there is a very good chance it does that, and it's not going to fill me right this second, right? Yeah, I would love for it to swipe down and fill me, but there's a good chance this comes all the way back. And if it does, it does, right? These are algos, and I will. Get, that's just what's probably going to happen. But I follow my rules. I will get filled, and I'm going to hold on to half until I see an opposing setup. I'm telling you, if you have rules like that, then you're not questioning every move and you're not panicking out and you're like oh no wait no oh, i almost had that it just now it's 10 ticks against me again i i don't want to see this disappear that's why most traders don't make money and never catch big moves because they're just they let the algos screw with their head right yeah it's not if this does this and comes all the way back here that, that's not fun i know it's not fun but you've got to be consistent you got to sit here and have your rules I know some of you are probably like, well, I don't know if my rules are correct, and that's that's true, right? Unless you unless you're a seasoned trader, you know, 
you, you can have rules up to yin yang. You don't know if, there, if that's actually an edge or if what, that's what you should be doing. That's why, at least to start, you should probably follow my rules because of the experience I have, right? And be like, and then you can tweak them as you go. But you can, right off the bat, I'm giving you the template. Get in your trades, hold half for an hourly ATR, and get out of the other half when you see an opposing setup. Your mind, you will be shocked at how clear your mind will be where you're not being tortured in these markets, right? See, this is, this is exactly what I was expecting from the trade, and it doesn't bother me. You know, yeah, I don't want to see this all disappear, but you've got to know if your market is algo run, which most of them are, that it's going to come real close, and then they're going to screw with you. Then you get out, and then it does that. And you're like, damn it, man, I should. So just don't do that. Just leave your order in there. Because if you're consistent, you're going to be filled enough where the times that you decided to panic out, or this is going to well outweigh the profit you make by being patient, is going to well outweigh the money you cost yourself jumping in and out of trades because of this, these algos screwing with you. So hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> All right, Bruce, anything else? No. I just got to retake for this uh, NASDAQ. No, I no. think uh, we've, we've kind of digressed into... Uh, bar crawl movies and trying to define it, but uh, with David, but uh, that's a whole nother subject. Um, uh, no, Scott, I mean, uh, no other questions. We're all caught up there. Uh, uh, looking well, at the, na the NASDAQ, you're looking at it again here. That was also requested by Jin. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's it. So, uh, uh, you know, if you uh it's been out over an hour and a half so um whenever you like scott um go take a rest please <laughs> yeah i'm uh definitely struggling um all right so again if nothing happens here in crude <clears throat> so if nothing new comes in i will still play the retest failure of this one uh nasdaq same that got pretty close there Again, I'm not even worried about this. This will retest, but something new might come in this. But if it comes up here, retest fails, I'll get short there. Um, and then I'll probably be algoed in this. Uh... So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like how many guys right there on this on this algo pop, like panicked out. And now it's all coming back. You're like, oh, damn it. What? I just cost myself, right? So it's just like, just follow your rules. All right. All right, uh, Bruce. Yeah, great stuff, Scott. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, happy new year to you and your family. Uh, and uh, best of health. Take care of yourself. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll do it again uh, uh, in uh, 2022. Yep, thanks for having me. Next time, um, I know a lot of the stuff today was probably not very clear just because I feel like I'm going to my head spinning, but um, hopefully you guys got the gist of it. And again, you got to remember, this is really bad trade today, too. So, um, you know, we only had a couple setups, but, uh, you know, other than that, you guys, I got the trade room. It's in the Discord as well. You guys can come in there. I do this twice a day. Um, that's about it. But, yeah, I'll happy New Year, Bruce, and I'll see all you guys next year. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, we'll uh, – no, no webinar tomorrow. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll just, uh, we'll wrap it up here for the, for the year right now. Uh, and, and, uh, and you will see you guys, uh, uh come Tuesday, uh, I believe. All right. So we'll take it from there. Thanks everybody. Thanks again, Scott. Get well, and, uh, we'll catch up with you next week. Thanks Bruce. Talk to you. Bye. Bye.